Hello, hello everybody, this is Tiptop MTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I am going to be going over all the spoilers from today uh, for Jumpstart. So, if you guys don't know what Jumpstart is, essentially it's a new product for Magic where you're going to open up two booster packs, combine them into one deck, and you know, it has the lands already in there. So, all you have to do is buy two, shuffle them together, and you have a deck. And it'll be a combination of two themes. So, for example, uh, you might have a dog theme and a snake theme, and now you have a dog snake theme. Or you might have a Garouk theme and a doctor theme, and you might have a doctor Garouk theme. And so that's how that is supposed to work. And so what I'm going to do is the packs are a little bit different. They're not just like you're going to get a bunch of random cards. There are themes. And you might think, oh, you're going to open up a goblin theme and you'll get an assortment of random goblin cards. And that is kind of true. But how it actually works is that there are like, so let's take the theme of goblins. There are maybe five different versions of a goblin pack you could open. It's not random cards. It's a set of cards. So think of them as kind of like mini decks that you're opening. So why don't I show you an example? For example, the minion theme. So you would open up this exact pack. This is not just an example of what you could open up. This is one of four of the minion themes. And so if you manage to get a minion theme, it might be this set of cards or it could be one of the other three, but it is not just a random assortment of cards. So uh, that way there can be a lot more synergy. So why don't we go over the minion theme? So if, here's just a brief overview. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down each card individually, but I'm not going to talk about the Core Set 2021 cards because I already talked about those in separate videos. So this is the minion theme. Pretty, like, very typical if you're looking at it. It's basically you want to sacrifice things and then you want things that care about when you sacrifice things. Uh, and you kind of have the leader with Kel's fight fixer at the bottom. So why don't we take a look at the cards a little closer. So starting off, we have Gul Ghoul Caller's Accomplice. It's a two-cost black creature, human rogue, 2-2. Two, two. And you can pay four and exile it from your graveyard to create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Activate this ability only time you could cast a sorcery. So this is a very mad card, but in the deck it works really well. It's a 2-2, two, two, you sacrifice it, you get another thing you can sacrifice later. So not bad in terms of what this deck is trying to do. Now, one thing I want to note, all of these cards, most of these cards, sorry, uh, are going to be added to Historic on MTG Arena, so I'm going to be evaluating them from within Jumpstart itself and within, so from within Jumpstart, within the pack, and being added to Historic, so keep that in mind. Then we have Dutiful Attendant. It's a three-cost black creature, human warrior, one-two, and when it dies, return another target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So you're going to want to recur something that you maybe sacrificed, and it's when it dies, so it's something you want to sacrifice. So works really well in the deck. Not going to see much play anywhere else. Next, we have Nocturnal Feeder, which is a three-cost black creature vampire rogue, 2-1 with flying, and when it dies, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. And when I first saw this, I'm like, oh, this is probably some reprint from somewhere, but apparently this is a new card, and there are going to be 37 new cards, which are only legal in Vintage, Legacy, Historic, and Commander. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Um, I don't know why this was constituted as a new card. I feel like there's better versions of this card. But yeah, this is a new card. And then we have Innocent Blood. It's a one-cost black sorcery. Each player sacrifices a creature. Nice card. I could actually see this being a thing in a historic deck, uh, which is kind of cool. Next, we have Thriving More. This is part of a cycle of lands. I'm not really going to talk about them much after this one, but it enters the battlefield tapped, and then you choose a color other than black, and it taps for black or the chosen color. So you might be like, wait a second, that's just a normal tap land. Kind of. If you're building it in a constructed deck, yes, most of the time. However, it is nice. For instance, say you're playing a three color deck. Say you're playing Esper. So you have white, blue, and black. You need blue mana. Well, this can tap for black or blue. You need white mana. It can tap for black or white. And the reason that they are in Jumpstart and why they make so much sense is that you're getting two themes and most of the themes are monocolored. And then you want to make sure that your land can tap for the right things. So if you opened up a black and white land and then didn't get white, a white pack as your second pack type, then that land's kind of useless. So this allows it to be a, you know, adaptable kind of land, which I really like. Next we have Shambling Goblin. It's a one-cost black creature goblin zombie, 1-1, uh, one, one, and when it dies, target creature and opponent control gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So little maybe mini removal, also a creature, you know, gives you a little bit of extra bo bonus room, like a bonus for sacrificing it. It could just be a 1-1 one, one for one, and it would still be decent in this deck because you want to kill it. It almost has two power, though, because it, you can hit it for one and then give it minus one, minus one. So that, keep that in mind. 
Next, we have Bone Picker. It's a four cost creature bird, three, two, and this spell costs three less to cast if a creature died this turn. So this could be a one cost black flying death toucher, three, two which is kind of insane, and uh, I could see this slotting into like a Rakdos kind of sacrifice deck within Historic, so I, I kind of like this card. And then next we have Kels Fight Fixer, it's a 4 cost black legendary creature as Azra Warlock with Menace, and it says whenever you sacrifice a creature you may pay blue or black, if you do draw a card, and then you can pay one, sacrifice a creature, it gains indestructible until end of turn, so it's allowing you to sacrifice creatures, it's allowing you to draw cards, everything you're going to want to do, it's also for the purposes of this, it is mono black. It, for the purposes of commander, it is Demir. So it looks like we're going to be getting maybe a cycle of either five or ten of these that are multicolored, and that's kind of cool because I actually like the design of this card. So yeah, I really like it. Okay, our next theme is the rainbow theme. So this one is special because it is all five colors. So we have things that can generate all colors of mana, things that are all colors of mana. So why don't we break this down a little closer? We have Alloy Mirror, uh, which is just a 3 cost 2-2 two -two mirror that can tap for mana of any color. Needed in this deck because, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be able to consistently get your mana. It's just one thing that you, you obviously need more than that to ensure it, but that makes it a lot better. We have Augur Spree. It's a uh, 3 cost instant, and it says target creature gets plus 4, minus 4 until end of turn. This is interesting. It can be a removal spell for anything that has toughness 4 or less, or it can be a boost spell for any of your stuff that has more than 4 toughness. Uh, so like, for instance, they say they don't block with something, or they, they don't block something of yours, and you can like turn some of its toughness into power. Uh, I would rather just run a removal spell, I think, but I'm not sure. This is kind of a weird card. Next, we have Law Mage's Binding. It's a three cost Azorius colored enchantment aura with flash and enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated, so pretty good removal. Uh, Terramorphic Expanse, basically Evolving Wild. It'll be interesting to see that go into Historic. I'm more excited about this for Historic Brawl because, you know, we already have Evolving Wilds if you wanted this effect, but now in Historic Brawl, we have two of essentially the same cards, which is kind of interesting. Next, we have Pros, uh, Prophetic Prism. It's a two-cost artifact, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. And then you can pay one and tap and add one mana of any color. So they're really making sure you have the right amount of mana. Skittering Surveyor. It's a three-cost artifact creature construct, and when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So, again, making sure you have the right colors. This was already in Historic, so not, nothing interesting. Next... Okay, so, like, I just wanted to show you, like, look how many things tap for color, or, like, multicolored mana, and we're about to see why, because so far everything's been, like, kind of meh, so why don't we move back through and go to Rupture Spire. It's a land, and when it enters the battlefield tapped, uh, you know, it enters the battlefield tapped, and when it does, sacrifice it unless you pay one and tap for mana of any color. Okay. Uh, Din Dinrova Horror, it's a 3 cost Demir colored creature horror, and when it enters the battlefield, return target permanent to its owner's hand, then that player discards a card. This can hit lands, which is kind of mean. Um, that's yeah, just generally pretty good. You're playing something, getting a creature out of it, and then making your opponent recast something, and then also making them discard a card. So if they have no cards in hand, which can happen a lot in pre-constructed decks or like decks that aren't optimized, then it essentially just says destroy target permanent, so very, very interesting. Next, we have Mirrodin's Core. It's a land, and it says tap, add a colorless. Tap, put a charge counter on it. Tap, remove a charge counter. Add one man of any color. So you can add one man of any color, like, every other turn, or, like, you would save this to be the last thing you tap, and then you put a charge counter on it, you know, whenever you don't need it. But then when you do need it, it has charge counters already on it. So, uh, not my favorite land, but not awful. Next, we have Raging Regisaur. It's a 4-cost red and green creature dinosaur, and when it attacks, it deals 1 damage to any target for 4. Uh, I guess it's okay. Uh, not. I don't really see why it's in this deck, other than it's a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four with a bonus, you know? Next, we have a Fusion Elemental. It's a 5-cost Wooberg creature elemental 8-8, eight, eight, and that's it. Uh, pretty good if you can get it out, especially in Limited. Big creatures are what win you the game. Next, we have Iron Root Warlord. It's a 3-cost Selesnya creature, Tree Folk Soldier, and its power is equal to the number of creatures you control. And then you can pay 5 and create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. So it's a mana dump, it is a big creature, uh, everything you want. 
Next, we have Chamber Sentry. It's an X cost artifact creature construct, and it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. Then you can pay X, tap, remove X counters from it, and it deals X damage to any target. Then you can pay five and return it from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. You, you can see two cards on the screen right now. I'm not going to print it and you can't. Uh, this card is probably the better of the two, even though it's only a rare. So, what's cool about this is in this deck, you're probably paying it for Wooburg, paying Wooburg, and you're paying 5 for a 5 5 that can ping things down, and then it keeps coming back. Whether you have, like, it just. <laughs> It's very, very potent in limited because it's a creature that just doesn't go away. Versus something like Maelstrom Ain Archangel, which you pay 5 for. It's a 5-5 five, five with flying, very good. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast a spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. That is very good, but there aren't any, like, 10 cost in this pack. So you better hope this is combined with something that has a lot of big costing things, otherwise this really doesn't do that much. So... I think Chamber Sentry is better here, because I'm trying to look at this from a limited environment. However, Maelstrom Archangel would be an interesting inclusion in, like, a Joda Historic Brawl deck. I love Joda. I mean, like, you, you, you're you trying to get to Wooburg anyways, and you're trying to cast things that are really big. This is just a secondary way to do that. Next, we have the Predatory theme. So this is supposed to be, like, you have the prey and the beast that are eating the prey. So we have Ginger Brute, which is the uh, prey, Dawn Treater Elk, prey, Sabertooth Mauler, not prey. Uh, so you get the idea. Um, looking at it as a whole, uh, pretty decent. It, it's very similar to the Minion theme, except with a little bit less support. So I'd rather pull the Minion theme over this one. However, there are some very interesting cards in here, and so why don't we break those down? We have Ginger Brute, was printed in Throne of Eldraine. I'm not really going to talk about it much. It is a very great card, being a 1-1 one, one for 1 with haste that can be you know, use any color of mana, and it can gain you life, and it become a blockable. It's just everything you want in a card. Then we have Dawn Treader Elk, it's a 2 cost 2-2 two, two creature elk, and you can pay green and sacrifice it and search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap and shuffle your library. It's a creature till you don't need it to be, and then it ramps you. Very, very good card. Like, these are good cards, like, alone in limited, but it's, when you combine them all together, they're just not that amazing. And then Crushing Canopy, pay 3, instant, choose 1, destroy target, drift flying, or destroy target enchantment. I hate this card in this format, uh, you know, you are a lot of the time not going to have a target, so, I mean, your best bet is maybe destroying something of your, your own to get a death trigger, maybe? I don't know. Similarly, Marauder's Axe seems like a weird inclusion in here, but it is a two-cost artifact equipment. It says equipped creature gets plus two, plus oh, and equipped two. Very meh. Next, we get Time Defeat. It's a three-cost green source screen. It says, choose target creature and opponent controls. When this creature dies this turn, you gain three life. Target creature you control fights that creature. I'm only going to talk about this one from a limited perspective, and we will talk about that soon. But just note, this is not coming to Historic for some reason. But yeah, so this was last printed in Theros. It's a very good fight card. Pay three, fight, and you're gaining a bunch of life. But I don't know. It's I don't think it's that powerful. Then we have Thriving Grove, it's the green version of the other weird land we talked about earlier. It's also the fourth out of 37 new cards. Next, we have a Brindle Shote. It's a two-cost green creature, boar 1-1, one, one, and when it dies, create a 3-3. Three, three. So in the end, you'll have four power for... Not in the end, you'll never have four at the same time from this card, but you have gotten four power and a death trigger from this card. So very, very good in this deck. Affectionate Inkdrid, it's a six-cost creature beast, and when it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you control. Um, or you don't control, sorry, not you control, that would be very weird. So, removal on a creature, very, very good. You want removal, you want big creatures, this is the combination of the two. Now, um, I want to also mention one thing. If there is a card in multiple jumpstart packs and themes, uh, I'm not talking about it multiple times. So, for instance, Affectionate Inkdrid does show up in another theme later in this video, but I'm not going to showcase it like I am now. Next, we have Irresistible Prey. It's a one-cost green sorcery, and it says, Target creature must be blocked for this turn of fable. Draw a card. Uh, pretty good. It can guarantee you something of yours dies if you want a death trigger. You, if your opponent only has a couple creatures, you can guarantee to at least kill one of them. It's replacing itself in its hand, so at worst, it's just thinning your deck. So, very potent card. Then we have Nyetha, Nyeth of the Dire Hunt. It's a four-cost green legendary creature human warrior, and whenever one or more of your creatures you control fight or become blocked, so think about all the fighting we've seen, all the must-be-blocked we've seen, you draw a card without having to pay any mana. So, very potent card. I already want to build this as a commander. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay 3. If you do, double target creature's power until end of turn. That creature must be blocked this combat if able. So, yeah, pay 3. Essentially, make your creatures really big. Make sure one of your opponents die, in a commander sense, make sure one of your opponent's creatures die or deal a ton of damage. And, you know, it also draws you a card, assuming it does get blocked. Also, she can double her own power, so if you want to win with commander damage, you know, pay three, double it. If you, she has a bunch of equipment on her, you know, I guess that's why we had that random axe, because, you know, make her have five power, then you can double it to ten, and that's insane. So, keep an eye out for this. Next, we have the reanimate theme, and this one, they didn't spoil every single card for. They had one M21 card and, a, I assume, all the new cards. So, uh, here, there's some interesting ones, so why don't we break it down? This is probably my favorite one so far. First, we have Entomer Exarch. It's a four-cost black creature cleric, and when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Either return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or target opponent reveals a hand, you choose a non-creature card from it, that player discards it. So, if you don't have anything in your graveyard, you can get rid of something of your opponent. If your opponent has no cards in hand, you can return something from your graveyard. The versatility on this is amazing. Next, we have Meyer Triton. This was last reprinted in Theros Beyond Death. I don't, like, it was only here for the theme, although it is interesting to see it with the new mill uh, mechanic, because originally it did say the old text, so it's interesting to see it like that. Then we have Grave Waker, this is a 6 cost creature, bird spirit, 5-5 five, five with flying, and when it, and then you can pay 7 and target creature is returned, or return target creature, uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So you can cheat mana cost repeatedly, if you have a way to sacrifice things like late game, this thing can get insane and limited. Next, we have Reanimate. It is a one-cost sorcery. It says, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Use life equal to its converted mana cost. This would have been insane in Historic, and it's another one of those cards that will not be in Historic, and we will talk about that at the end. Uh, but yes, this is a big staple, and I saw a lot of people getting excited about it as a reprint. On the other hand, we have Tiny Bones, Trinket Thief, who's a new card, which I saw a lot of people getting excited for. It's a two-cost Legendary Creature Skeleton Rogue. I kind of like two-cost commanders. You can get them out fairly early, maybe get some like free damage in before anyone's set up. But uh, it says at the beginning of each end step, if an opponent discarded a card this turn, draw a card and you lose a life. So it's each end step. So if you have a way to make it so each opponent discards a card on their end step, then or I guess you might have to do it before that, but, like, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, they discard a card. Well, then you're going to be drawing a card on every person's turn. And then, you might, like, I tried to build a you-discard-all-your-cards uh, deck, and, you know, it is a very potent deck, and, you know, at the time, I didn't have all the greatest cards, obviously, but one issue I kept running into was people just wouldn't have cards in hand, and then a lot of my stuff wouldn't work. They would be like, oh, I just won't draw cards, and boom, your entire deck just basically does nothing anymore, which, you know, was a kind of issue. It was an issue of how I built the deck, but this kind of solves that by having the second ability that says, pay six, each opponent with no cards in their hand loses ten life. Yes, each opponent, first off, so you don't have to worry about yourself. You're probably also not going to have no cards in hand because your opponents going to be are going to be discarding cards because or and that's going to make you draw cards. So yes, each opponent with no cards in hand loses ten life. So you could really quickly, you know, make this go out of control. Next up, we have the Bassery theme. So each Planeswalker is going to have its own like theme. Out of these, there are very few non-M21 cards. I believe there are only two. And why don't we talk about those now? Uh, we have Knight of the Tusk and Thriving Heath. Knight of the Tusk is a 6 cost 3-7 Vigilance, and the other one is the Special Land. So this is a very kind of boring, but when you look at the M21 cards that are within it, it's very clear that you're going for a plus 1 plus 1 counter theme, which can be very potent when combined with other themes as well. So keep an eye out for this one. This is, I believe, one of their more mythic themes. The ones with mythics in them are considered to be better. So keep an eye out for those. Next, we have the Witchcraft theme number one. So these have a lot of witch-related cards. Why don't we just break those all down? We have Bake into a Pie. It's a four-cause instant. Destroy target creature. Create a food token. Uh, that's from Throne of Eldraine. Doesn't see much play, even though it is pretty good. In limited, though, very potent. Uh, I keep saying potent. Blood the Blood Hunter Bat. It's a four-cause creature bat with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, target player loses two life. You gain two life. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this card. I'd rather have a 4-4 for four, 4 four with flying. I know that's unrealistic, uh, but it is a little bit of life gain if that matters. And if you can return it to the battlefield from the graveyard, you can maybe do some, like, loop here where you keep, like, returning it and then, you know, they keep losing life. So there might be some place for this, but not, I don't really feel like in this environment you'll be able to get this to do anything. 
Next, we have Festering Newt. It's a one-cost black creature salamander. When it dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That creature gets minus one, minus four, minus four if you control a creature named Bog Brew Witch. Uh, that may not look great right now. I mean, it's it's not awful. Uh, we saw a version of this, but just slightly worse, so a little bit earlier. Uh, but there are other cards, obviously, uh, Bog Brew, which is in this pack, but we'll talk about that a little later. Then we have Cauldron Familiar. It's a one-cost black creature, Cat 1-1, one, one. and when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. Sacrifice a food, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, there was that bake into a pie, which does create a food, so that, you know, isn't completely irrelevant, but I don't know if you're going to be able to really get this off. Um, next we have a Malakir Familiar, it's a 3 cost black creature bat flying death touch, and whenever you gain life, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Uh, I guess that kind of goes in with a gain life theme, so it looks like there's a little bit of a gain life theme in here. 2-1 uh, flying death touch for 3 isn't awful, so that card isn't bad. Bubbling Cauldron, 2 cost artifact, pay 1, sacri tap, sacrifice a creature, you gain 4 life, pay 1, tap, sacrifice a creature named Festering Newt, which we just saw. Uh, each opponent loses 4 life, you gain life equal to the number of, equal to the life loss this way. Remember that thing has a trigger for when it dies, so by sacrificing it, you are getting a lot of things to go off. Um, also, it says each opponent loses 4 life, you gain life this way, so if you're playing with multiple players, you could easily gain 12 life from that, so keep an eye out. Next, we have a Tempting Witch. It's a 3-cost creature, human warlock, 1-3, and when it enters the battlefield, create a food token, and you can pay 2 and tap and sacrifice the food. Target player loses 3 life, so it's a way to generate food tokens. It's a way to make people lose life from food tokens. Very... Uh, I don't want to say good, but it, it adds to the deck. Then we have a Bog Brew Witch. It's a 4-cost creature, human wizard, 1-3, uh, and you can pay 2 and tap and search your library for a card named Festering Newt or Bumbling Cauldron, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. So if you get this out, you're probably going to go get the Cauldron, and then you're going to go get the Newt, and then you're going to be able to, you know, get that little combo to go off. So I, it's not good, obviously, without those cards, but with those cards, it's pretty decent. Next, we have Witch of the Moors. This is a new card. It's a 5-cost black creature, human warlock, 4-4, four, four, with death touch, and at the beginning of your end step, if you gained life this turn, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and you return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty good. Now, remember that bat that I said was, oh, this is kind of mad? Well, that's actually pretty good with this, because you play this, then you play that creature. You're going to gain life. You're going to make your opponent sacrifice a creature, and if you can find a way to sacrifice the bat... You can then return it from your graveyard to your hand, and then next turn repeat the process. So, there is a little bit of value there. Next, we have the Witchcraft theme number two. These are very similar cards with just a few differences. The main ones are Black Cat and Last G uh, Gasp. So, the Black Cat is a two-cost black creature, creature zombie cat, 1-1, one, one, and when it dies, target opponent discards a card at random. Uh, discarding a card is potent. Discarding a card at random is even more potent. Last Gasp. Gasp is a 2-cost black instant target creature gets minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn. Uh, can kill a lot of things, but a lot of the time you're going to want to kill something bigger, although this can also be used in addition to combat to kill things. Next, we have Swarm of the Blood Flies. It's a 5-cost black creature insect with flying, and when it, it enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and when it dies, whenever another creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So this deck is a lot less focused on life gain. It took out most of the life gain cards, and it added in a lot of, you know, just death trigger cards. So that's kind of a difference. And then Blood Divination, pay 4, sorcery, is additional cast to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature, then draw 3. Not bad. Then we have the Garouk theme. So this is a lot of cards that care about Garouk, and by care about Garouk, I mean with power 4 or greater, and or cards that care about creatures. Now, that's what a lot of Garouk cards care about, is power 4 or greater, but a lot of these things don't have power 4 or greater. You know, it's fine. What do we do over the cards that aren't from M21? Those are or Orazaka, or or Orzaka, Frillback. It's a 3-cost green creature dinosaur 4-2. Not bad, it is 4 power for less than 4 mana, so pretty good. A 4-4 four, four for 4 beast, pretty generic. We have Brush Strider, it's a 2 cost creature beast, Vigilance 3-1, not power 4 greater. I mean, that doesn't have to be power 4 greater, but there are cards in here that say power 4 greater, so, you know, that's always an upside. It's just kind of generic. And then Hunter's Insight, it's a 3 cost instant. It says, choose target creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker this turn, draw that many cards. This card is insane. If you have a 7-7, seven, seven, you play this at instant speed if they didn't block it because they don't want to lose their creature, you draw 7 cards. My issue with it is, if you're winning, win more. 
and that's not always true, but if you're able to swing and get through and not have too many repercussions and still be able to cast this and have it be big enough to where this is worth the amount of cards drawn, you're probably already winning. So that's kind of an issue. Alrighty, and then let's move on to the Chandra theme, which you'll notice has slightly different formatting because there seems to be less cards in it. I don't know. Uh, there are some pretty decent cards in here. It has all the Chandra cards, and unlike the other Planeswalkers, this has a lot more, like, non-Corset 2021 cards, and why don't we break those down? Uh, before I actually do that, I just want to say, um, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it's useful. A lot of sites that are covering spoilers aren't grouping them and letting you know here are the groups, here are the cards you are going to find together, you know... A lot of sites aren't even showing you what Core Set 2021 cards are in Jumpstart, so I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you like being able to see the Core Set 2021 cards here, or would you rather just see just Jumpstart, or would you rather just see the cards? Uh, I just feel like this is kind of a more useful view. Nah, so why don't we look at the Jumpstart cards? We have Fanatical Firebrand. It's a one-cost red creature goblin pirate 1-1 one, one with haste, and you can tap it, sacrifice it, it deals one damage to any target. Very good and limited, 1-1 one, one for 1. You're going to get some damage out really early, and then it can also be used as a removal spell later. Uh, it's already in Historic, so you don't have to worry about it there. Then we have Hungry Flames. It's a three-cost instant. It says it deals three damage to target creature and two damage to target player or planeswalker. So, uh, you know, you're paying a little bit extra for the removal in limited. That's a lot easier to do and by doing that you're also burning out your opponent so uh and it also in the deck there are lots of the cards that care about dealing non-combat damage so this is good there too so does firebrand then we have pillar flame pillar flame deals two damage to any target if a creature was dealt damage this way exile it instead so it's shock but it exiles but it's sorcery speed and can only hit creep no no it can hit anything sorry so yeah shock it sorcery speed but with the bonus of exiling things in limited again that's a lot more acceptable then we have thriving bluff it's just the same version but with red of all the other lands next we have young pyromancer and i saw a lot of people getting excited about this one it's a two cost red creature human shaman two one and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell create a one one red elemental creature token so what why people are excited about this even though it was just literally just reprinted in the chandra signature spell look is that it's now being added to Historic, so this is not one of the cards they mentioned not being in Historic. Now, they haven't updated the list since this was revealed, so it is fully possible, because um, there's a list somewhere of all cards that are in the set that are going to be replaced with something else. Again, I'll talk about that more later, but just note that that is really exciting. Then we have Pyroclastic Elemental. It's a 5, cost 5, 4, creature elemental, pay 3, deals 1 damage to target player. Good in this deck, bad overall. It's already in both Standard and uh, historic. Next, we have Flame of Firebrand. It's 3 cost sorcery. It deals 3 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets. So, again, you can hit a player and then 2 things, a player and 1 thing, you know, just do whatever you want with it. Pretty decent spell. Next, we have the dog theme, and they only revealed, like, new cards and, like, one of the rares. They didn't reveal anything else, uh, so this is all I have to show you, but let's look at all of those cards. We have Trusty Retriever. It's a new card. It's a four-cost creature dog, and when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Either put a counter on it or return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand, so you're retrieving an artifact or enchantment. So I'm going to assume you're going to have equipment in this deck, and then it can also just boost itself. Then we have Supply Runners, it's a 5 cost creature dog, and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control, 2-2, two, two. this card's kind of garbage. You're paying 5 mana for a 2-2, two, two. I mean, it's not even putting a counter on itself, and I do get that you're putting counter on everything, but you can pay 2 mana to put a counter on everything at sorcery speed, uh, save the 3 mana and cast a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not a big fan of this card. Next, we have Release the Dogs, it's a 4 cost sorcery, and it says create 4 one, one white dog creature tokens. Pretty good. You're gonna get a big army out to put a bunch of counters on at an overcosted price. Then we have Izamaru Hound of Konda. It's a one cost two two legendary creature dog. That's it. It's legendary because it's a two two for one. It was added as a balancing measure. Uh, yeah, so not bad, uh, especially if you're obviously only having one of it in the deck. Next, so. Those were all of the themes, so those were all of the themes we were told about, but there is one more card that they just, you know, 
didn't fit into a theme, but they also revealed that being the blue version of this land, I just thought I'd let you know that this does exist. And that also brings me to my next chalking point. We have seen 13 out of the 37 new cards. There's probably going to be a bunch of new legendaries. I'm really excited. Let me know what you guys are thinking of the spoilers so far. Uh, again, let me know how you want me to do this. Do you want me to show all the Corset 2021 cards? Do you want me to show you what's in each, like, pack type? Or would you rather just have it be, you know, every single card and I just talk about it, you know, and kind of talk about the cards in the set? Let me know. Now, that's not it. These cards are go not going to be in MPG Arena. Now, these are the ones apparently spoiled today, but from all of my sources, like from all the spoiler websites, from me just going to each spoiler source, th two of these cards were not spoiled. So, Reanimate and Time to Feed will not be in MPG Arena, and they will be replaced with an equivalent, and this is for mostly meta, reason meta balancing re reasons. But Scourge of Neltoth and Exhum were not revealed, but note that these will be somewhere in the set, so keep an eye out for those. I don't know if they didn't mean to reveal them, if, you know, there's some source that added these later, I'm not sure. Just keep an eye out for these. So, again, these will be replaced with something not completely removed. We also don't know exactly how it's going to work in MTG Arena, but there will be 20 cards in total that are not on MTG Arena that are in these spoilers, and they said they're updating them as they go. Alrighty, guys, this has been a long video. If you guys stuck through it, thank you. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. If you want to see more awesome content like this, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. See you guys.